what is a salutary latrine and why should an MBBS student be concerned about it? As a medical student, you must be thinking that my concern is human anatomy and ultimately be able to make diagnosis and treat diseases. What is, where is the scope for latrine? But if you were told that one of the greatest medical inventions is not a new drug, but a properly designed latrine, what will you say? Yes, something as simple as a sanitary latrine that can prevent millions of infections, thereby reducing mortality and even improve nutritional status. First of all, what is the meaning of sanitary? Sanitary term means some conditions or practices that promote health and hygiene and thereby protect you from ill health. So those practices which promote health are sanitary practices. So you can have a sanitary latrine, sanitary well, sanitary water supply, etc. Okay, we have understood that sanitary latrine is important if your interest is in healthcare. So what exactly is sanitary latrine? A sanitary latrine is a toilet that disposes the human waste in a way that prevents disease transmission. You know that human excreta or any excreta is a mix of trillions and trillions of organisms, many of which can be disease causing. So the human waste is dealt in such a way that it prevents disease transmission from these microorganisms and prevents environmental contamination from by these organisms. Okay, so that is the concept. When do we call our latrine to be sanitary latrine? What are the criteria? The operational definition says that a latrine to be called a sanitary latrine, it has to satisfy the following four criteria. One, the excreta should not contaminate any water source, be it groundwater, pond or river water. It should not contaminate any water source, it should, it should be away from these sources. Second, the excreta should not pollute the surface soil. It should be deep enough so as not to reach the microorganism should not reach the surface soil. So people walking bare feet should not be exposed to these disease causing organisms. Third criteria, the excreta should not be accessible to flies and other vectors. And fourth criteria is that this excreta should not become a nuisance to the public by being an eyesore, nasty appearance or by way of stinking. So if all these four criteria are satisfied, we can officially call the latrine to be sanitary latrine. So unlike open defecation or poorly constructed toilets, a sanitary latrine ensures that the waste is received, contained, treated and finally disposed of in a way that it protects human health and environment from the disease causing bacteria, the disease causing organic. So water seal is one of the commonly used waste ways to make latrines sanitary. How does it work? The squatting plate or the toilet seat is fitting with a, fitted with a water seal. What is a water seal? You can see a small amount of water is always there below the toilet seat because it is trapped in a U-shaped pipe and this U-shaped bend or pipe is known as well the trap. So some amount of water is always present in this pipe because of its shape. This is, this water is called the water seal and acts as a barrier and prevents bad smells from coming out of the latrine, prevents access of flies to the excreta, prevents disease carrying insects to crawl out in the reverse direction and it also prevents the gases and odors from rising up because it is a water seal. So this water seal is refreshed every time the toilet is flushed. So it is not a, some stagnant water. Some water is always present, but it is not always the same water. Hence, it ensures cleanliness and hygiene as well. This water seal system is commonly used in both household types of latrine and in public sanitization facilities as well. We can see clearly in this diagram, this is the squatting plate. This is the toilet seat. And this is the U-shaped pipe known as trap. So by virtue of this design, when you flush the toilet, some water always remains in this U-shaped pipe. You can see this is this remaining water is called as the water seal, and the U-shaped pipe is known as 
ultra there are various types of latrines that we will cover in another lecture and these all latrines can be made sanitary if we can modify them in a way that it meets the four criteria that we discussed before water seal being in one of, of modifications but any other mod any modification which takes care of the four criteria we can call it a sanitary latrine one example is water seal we discussed before so various type of latrines that will be discussed in another lecture like borehole dug well water seal septic all these can be turned into sanitary if you can somehow modify and take care of the four criteria that we have discussed previously so we agree that a sanitary latrine is actually medical necessity why right? because it prevents fecal oral diseases commonly diseases like diarrhea cholera typhoid hepatitis a various parasitic infections which spread through fecal contamination of water and food can be prevented by using sanitary latrine because a sanitary latrine prevents fecal contamination of drinking water sources of the soil thereby of the food and has the break the cycle of fecal oral transmitted infections reducing stunting and malnutrition why because repeated infections repeated diarrhea will lead to lower malnutrition lower nutrition status and ultimately stunting repeated infections can lead to poor nutrient absorption also there was causing malnutrition and stunting lowering maternal and infant mortality uh, use of sanitary latrine during delivery is postpartum will reduce the risk of puerperal and neonatal sepsis thereby preventing the mortality dignity and safety they provide privacy special for women and thereby reducing the risk of overdefecation economic benefits obviously when the entire population has lesser amount of infections remains healthy and working most of the times the country will be economically will fare economically better and controlling antimicrobial resistance lesser the number of infections lesser is the use of antibiotic lesser the chances of causing antimicrobial resistance thank you